Hey everybody, Mike of Mike Likes, and it's always an exciting day when you get a new telescope to review from Celestron. So I'm going to get this thing inside the house and build it because you can see the base is flat packed and the tube needs no introduction. And yeah, we'll just go from there. So I'll be right back with you guys in a few seconds. Okay, so I got the box up to my office and it's like telescope by Ikea. You have to put the base together. So I brought my wrenches and my tools and I'll uh, go ahead and do a time lapse for you guys. So we're back here in the garage now that I've got the whole Dobsonian reflector assembled and I'm stepping back so you can see just how large this telescope is. Um, I measured it earlier from the base ground to the top of the tube, we're talking about 51 inches. So it's not a particularly large telescope in the sense that it's mostly tall. So you could kind of store this in the corner of a garage if you wanted to um, or a closet, but <laughs> size consideration is something to keep in mind. Now, you'll notice my phone is already docked in here. We're gonna do the alignment. I'm just gonna wake up my phone here. So getting a little closer to my phone, this is the StarSense application, and it's gonna tell us how we're going to align the telescope's mirror, which is over here, so you can kind of see. That's the mirror. That's gonna look at the night sky, and it's gonna plate solve the stars for us. But before we do that, we have to align this telescope, much like you'd align a finder scope over here, we have to align the telescope's mirror to what it's seeing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the daytime and I'll show you what that looks like. So I'll be right back with you. Okay, everybody, so I've gone ahead and I've aligned our finder to the telescope. So what I see in the finder is what I see in the scope. Now I'm doing the star sense setup and you'll have to excuse me because I'm using my iPad to film this and it's a little unwieldy. So we've mounted our cell phone. Okay, centered the phone. We're going to be turning the knobs underneath it. So there's knobs underneath the phone to center it. So we're going to center the camera over the mirror. So let's do that real quick. Okay, we're centered there. Next. Next step is to align the phone's view to your telescope's view. We're to get it 100 yards away. I'm using a power pole down there. Going next. Okay, now center the object near telescope's eyepiece. I'm gonna go do that. Okay, our object is centered. Gonna go next. Align camera view to telescope view. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in on my object, which is this power pole down at the bottom of the street. It's that. I can barely see it in the camera, obviously. And that's pretty much it. Done. Ready to locate objects to begin. All right, so I'll be back with you guys on a clear evening. Hey everybody, so I've got the StarSense 10 inch daub completely assembled here in my garage, ready for the first night without clouds, which in Ohio, as we approach the winter is hard to get, but um, tonight's looking good, so we'll see. I just wanted to show you around a little bit. This is a reflector, a Newtonian reflector telescope on a Dobsonian base. And Dobsonian is a fancy word for uh, a Lazy Susan type base, an Altaz base, where you can swivel it around left and right, and of course up and down, but you don't have to equatorially align this thing, thank goodness, because uh, you'd need a huge beefy mount to be able to support the weight of this optical tube. However, um, Dobsonian is after John Dobson, who was an astronomer from the West Coast, San Francisco. He kind of popularized this design and he used to build telescopes. John believed that, um, you know, looking up was everybody's, um, you know, desire to do. And he helped people build their own telescopes, including ones that looked a little bit more primitive, but similar to this. So this isn't like your typical refractor telescope where it's got lenses. If you look down the tube, there's just a primary mirror down there below. 
and a secondary mirror hanging out on these spider veins up here and the focuser is right there and um, I have a nicer finder on it but it's right there and this guy here is the star sense so just kind of giving you guys a tour these telescopes you look at it from the front of the tube not from the rear of the tube in movies and tv shows they'll look at these things in the rear of the tube and if you look in the rear of the tube all you're going to find just screws to adjust collimation that's the angle and alignment of the primary mirror down there so never look at the back of a reflector unless you're going to collimate it there's no need to do that now this is a big telescope right this weighs almost 30 pounds in the optical tube and another 25 pounds in this uh, ikea particle board type base that you saw me build it's a very usable telescope but carrying this at once is heavy. It weighs 55 pounds and you might say, well, that's not a lot of weight. I carry 55 pounds a lot. And I'm like, yeah, I think about it. My first grader weighs about that much, but she kind of holds me when I'm carrying her like a human being would. And this is a metal tube that's been outside in sub-freezing weather. And it's an awkward 55 pounds because most of the weight is down here where the mirror is in the base. So you're gonna carry this thing. It's not gonna be pleasant. The eight inch is about, 30 to 40 percent lighter it's 20 pounds in the tube 20 pounds in the base so 40 pounds you can kind of carry that all at once i like the 10 you get something like 56 percent more light gathering ability and that's not to be discounted um i'll show you guys what the star sense is like in another video but you can see that weird dock here is where you'll put your phone which is kind of going to give you gps to the sky otherwise very simple telescope to work with you've got your focuser right here that rakes in and out unfortunately it's not a dual speed focuser it's kind of nice to see dual speed crayford style focusers but this is completely serviceable i mean my celestron sct's are a whole lot more money than this telescope and um, they only have single speed focusers as well i like this silver color that celestron's using these days it's very nice and and you can see it in the dark really well it's not too dark and um, it's a little bit less boring than just a solid black tube to have a silver one and the base itself is very solid there's not a lot of jitter when you look through the eyepiece um, funniest thing about newtonian reflectors when you look in the eyepiece the mirror is going to make everything upside down it's not really a problem because there's no right side up or upside down in space so something to keep in mind there i love this uh, handle which makes it easy to kind of position it where you want it to go and um, yeah, that makes it really convenient. And these handles as well, this big handle here, which I noticed when I was putting it together, that comes assembled and you've got the same handle here. Both of these help connect it. Those two wooden areas, those holes there, that's for an eyepiece rack. I don't use eyepiece racks because what happens when you put an eyepiece in there and you live anywhere with humidity is you'll get to your eyepieces and they will be covered in a thin film of vapor, of water vapor. So I never use eyepiece racks. I keep them in their case or in my pocket and it just works a lot better. I only really use one or two eyepieces at a time anyway. I don't know. There's people that use six or eight eyepieces in a night. That seems a little crazy. I like my batter eight to 24 millimeter zoom and my 40 millimeter wide. And that's what I do with visual astronomy. And that is something to keep in mind. Newtonian reflectors are visual tools. You can use them for, you know, quick shots of the moon or the planets, but you're not gonna do any deep sky observations with a telescope like this. There's just no tracking except you moving it. And um, I just don't recommend it. Um, another thing to keep in mind about 10 inch telescopes, it's a lot of aperture to start with, but as you can see, it's not too bad if you lift it up in two pieces. You've got, you know, enough ability to separate them. People think you have to move it all at once. That's not the case. You can move this in two pieces. And for my needs, I bring this out from the garage. If you live on the third floor apartment building, maybe has no elevator, don't buy this telescope. Buy something that's not going to kill your back. But if you live in suburbia like me in a garage and you know, your car is ordinarily right there and you can just plug it into the back and put the base right with it. That's not a bad way to go. But we'll have first light with this telescope tonight. If the weather holds, I'll take it out for you. We'll go, we'll go freeze in the Ohio almost winter and um, we'll take it for a spin. All right, see you soon. So, hey guys, I've got the telescope out here on a very crisp evening and it's clear for the first time in days, which is always fun. And uh, yeah, this telescope works as expected. It's um, able to locate objects. Right now I'm on Jupiter and needless to say, I mean, I know you guys can't see it, but it's right there in my eyepiece. It's where the phone says it is. So this works really well. Now what's nice about this app is that you can actually change it to night vision mode. So you kind of preserve your, your night vision. You can do either one. You can have it in color or otherwise. So if I want to kind of slew to Saturn, 
I can do that. And you see as I get closer, the bullseye kind of turns and it gives the, gives the second to catch up. It says position found, follow object arrows to line up the bullseye on the target object. I'm just gonna actually switch us from red to color. I think it was doing better with that. Yeah, there we go. And yeah, let's get to Saturn. So Saturn turns green when you're close, right? So red, yellow, green. So Saturn, even though it kind of looks like the sun, it should be in my eyepiece now. Let's take a look. Yep, right where you'd expect it to be. This thing is that cool. It works as expected. You don't even, even need that dark a sky, I mean, I'm here outside and, you know, you can see that little point up there, that's Jupiter. And I doubt this will resolve Saturn, but it's over there in the blackness. But yeah, the demo works exactly as expected. Your phone is the GPS for your scope. And I mean, it's always looking through the camera. So as you move, it moves and it's mapping the sky. This is really cool plate solving technology, guys. And um, I highly recommend checking it out. They make various telescopes, but obviously the DAB is the one with the biggest aperture. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, outdoor review. I'm gonna go in and get some coffee. It is freaking cold. So that was a cold uh, observing session. The temperatures were below 30 degrees and I'm native to Florida. This is my first winter in Ohio, so I was cold. I'm getting myself some hot tea right now, but um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this review. I had a lot of fun making it for you guys. This is like witchcraft, this technology, this plate solving star sense stuff. I am just impressed with what you can do with an app and a little mirror and you know the phone's accelerometer time and date gps so on it's it's really neat stuff it's very exciting for the future of stargazing and astronomy so as always if you like what i'm doing here please throw a thumbs up if you love what i'm doing here subscribe join the channel you'll get notifications of new videos that i post i try to upload on a weekly basis but it just depends on what i'm buying what i'm doing and so on i really appreciate you guys' support and um if you're interested in the star sense explorer dobsonian telescope by celestron eight inch ten inch you can't go wrong these are fantastic scopes um so with that i wish you clear skies and have a great day